Hello, right. Um, today I want to talk about this. Um, the tongue seems like a simple thing, right? But like most head and neck anatomy, it's shockingly complicated. Today's video is not going to be about the tongue in its entirety because there's a lot of anatomy here. Um, I'm going to focus on the cranial nerves that innovate structures of the tongue because there are four cranial nerves, five really, but we'll focus on four. Four cranial nerves that innovate the tongue and these are things that people get confused by. If we take the tongue out of big head and we take a look at it and you know this from your own tongue right and maybe if you've uh, had animals as well you know the tongue is very rough. So the tongue is covered in papillae. There are four types of papillae. There are filiform papillae. And those are the rough ones, the things that give the tongue texture. So, you, so one of the functions of the tongue is to move food around your mouth. By making your tongue rough, it's easier for you to move food around your mouth. If a cat licks your tongue, that's really, really rough, right? Those are the filiform papillae. We also have um, fungiform papillae, which are fungi-shaped, fungiform, fungiform papillae. And then we have these big circumvallate papillae back here, great big ones, um, which are similar. They're kind of, you know, big bulbous shapes with a little moat around the bottom. The idea is that saliva dissolves little bits of the food, the molecules collect here and the taste buds can detect those molecules and you detect taste. And then we have, do you see these, these lines here? These are the folate papillae. So folate, fungiform and valate or circumvallate papillae, the big ones. These are taste bud related. The reason I'm talking about the papillae when I said I wasn't going to talk about the tongue in detail is that this V shape here that's formed by the circumvallate papillae, that kind of delineates the anterior two thirds of the tongue from the posterior third of the tongue. And we'll come back to that. Okay. So the tongue is a muscular organ. It's also a very sensitive organ. So it has general sensation like touch, pain, temperature, and then of course it has special, special sensation, which is taste, which is what the taste buds are involved in. Um, and then it's also muscular, so it has two sets of muscles. It has what we call intrinsic muscles, and whenever we say intrinsic we mean muscles within. So the muscles within the tongue are the intrinsic muscles, and the tongue is quite special because of course most muscles go from you know one bone to another bone and cause bones to move. The intrinsic muscles of the tongue change the shape of the tongue. This is very useful for me right now while I'm talking and I'm making sounds with my tongue and other parts of my face. Um, but also it's for moving food around your mouth, isn't it? You move the food around your mouth to help you chew. Surprisingly, you pick at your teeth a lot with your tongue as well, because the tongue keeps your teeth clean. So the tongue is very mobile. The intrinsic muscles of the tongue change the shape of the tongue and let you do things like lengthen your tongue and stick it out, protrude your tongue. And then we have extrinsic muscles of the tongue, muscles that go back down to the hyoid bone and go up to the palate and things like that. Those are muscles outside of the tongue, which anchor the tongue in place and move the tongue as a whole around the mouth, right? So intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the tongue. So we've got lots of muscles and lots of sensation. This is why there are so many cranial nerves involved in the function of the tongue. So let's start with the straightforward general sensation of the tongue. Now, remember the anterior two thirds of the tongue. What cranial nerve do you think carries the general sensation, pain, temperature, touch, that sort of thing, from the anterior two thirds of the tongue? What nerve, what cranial nerve carries general sensation from the face as a whole? The trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve five, that's right. And it's the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve that's coming down to the tongue. Now we could get lost in detail and talk about the lingual nerve and things like that and mixed nerves, but I wanna keep it simple and talk about cranial nerve and function in the tongue, all right? That's the idea. I'm gonna to try to keep it brief, which would be unusual. Trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve five, is responsible for general sensation from the anterior two thirds of the tongue. What about special sensation from the anterior two thirds of the tongue? Uh, the sensation of taste from the anterior two thirds of the tongue is carried back to the brain via the facial nerve, cranial nerve seven. The facial nerve um, 
is a very busy nerve in the head. It's responsible for a lot of secretions, nasal secretions, lacrimal secretions, tears, uh, saliva from two pairs of glands, and also for the m muscles of facial expression. All of those things are innervated by the facial nerve. The facial nerve is also carrying the special sensation of taste back to the gustatory nucleus from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. Its famous branch is the corda tympani, right? Corda tympani comes up time and time again. The, the facial nerve passes through, passes into the middle ear and um, pops out. It branches, branches pop out through cracks and fissures and gaps and holes in the skull. One of those branches is the corda tympani and that's famously carrying the neurons that carry the sensation of taste back to the, from the tongue to the brain, all right? So cranial nerve five and cranial nerve seven, anterior two thirds of the tongue. Now the posterior third of the tongue, there are two cranial nerves with the word glossal in them, or glosso, glosso meaning tongue. Lingual, glosso, if you come across those, we're talking about a tongue-shaped thing or the tongue. So the posterior third of the tongue, that's innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve nine. Now consider the name of the glossopharyngeal nerve, glossopharyngeal. It's, it's, the name suggests it's innervating structures associated with the tongue, but also structures associated with the pharynx. The glossopharyngeal nerve then, its job is more posterior, around here, right? If the trigeminal nerve is anterior here, the glossopharyngeal nerve is innervating things back here. And in the pharynx, there's a lot of overlap between the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, and the glossopharyngeal nerve, all right? So glossopharyngeal, the name of the nerve, suggests that it's innervating the tongue, but posteriorly, close to the pharynx, right? And the glossopharyngeal nerve is actually carrying uh, the general sensation from the posterior thirds of the tongue, like pain and temperature and touch. And it's also carrying special sensation of taste from the posterior third of the tongue. So that's handy, isn't it? Now, I said there's some crossover of the vagus and the glossopharyngeal nerve in the pharynx. Well, <clears throat> it's also described that the vagus nerve, which is why I said there was a fifth nerve, right? The vagus is the is cranial nerve 10. And that has also been described as carrying the sensations of taste and general sensation from the base of the tongue, the root of the tongue, like really, really far back, okay? But generally, we say it's the glossopharyngeal nerve carrying special sensation of taste and general sensation from the posterior third of the tongue, and it's the facial nerve and trigeminal nerve carrying special sensation, general sensation from the anterior two thirds of the tongue, okay? While we're talking about these nerves, um, there's a reflex associated with, the, with this region here, isn't there? If you poke the posterior third of the tongue, or the uvula, or the oropharynx back here, <laughs> just thinking about it, it's not very nice. That's the gag reflex, or the pharyngeal reflex. The glossopharyngeal nerve is responsible for the sensory limb, right, for the afferent limb of that reflex. That is, glossopharyngeal nerve is carrying the sensation from the posterior tongue and the, this sort of region here. So that uh, the purpose of the gag reflex or the pharyngeal reflex is to stop a solid object going down the airway. So if something goes too far back in your oral cavity, then the motor, so that sensory limb triggers the reflex and the motor limb is the vagus nerve, which then causes the muscles of the pharynx to contract and, and elevate all these structures and it causes the soft palate to elevate and close off the nasopharynx from the oropharynx, right? So the gag reflex, glossopharyngeal nerve, sensory, vagus nerve, motor, hopefully stops you choking. If we're gonna do all these nerves, I reckon that's a whole other video on its own. It's busy in here. So that's all the sensory stuff taken care of. That's three cranial nerves plus the vagus nerve. Um, one more thing then is the uh, motor innovation to the tongue, to the muscles of the tongue. This one's nice and easy. The other glossocranial nerve is cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve. Hypoglossal means it's gonna run under the tongue. And the hypoglossal nerves, almost its entire job is to innovate all of the muscles of the tongue, except one. Sorry. Um, it innovates, so the hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve 12, innovates all of the intrinsic muscles of the tongue <clears throat> and also all of the extrinsic muscles of the tongue except for one palatoglossus. Now palatoglossus, 
Um, <clears throat> palatoglossus is the muscle running between the palate and the tongue, which makes complete sense because it's called palatoglossus. And the palatoglossus muscle is actually innervated by the, uh, the 10th cranial nerve, the vagus nerve, because it's a muscle of the palate, but also a muscle of the tongue. There are, there are actually good embryological reasons as to why these different structures or these different parts of these structures are innervated by different cranial nerves. The, uh, the structures of the face and the neck are formed from the pharyngeal arches, blocks of embryological tissue which each have a cranial nerve associated with them and as those blocks of embryonic tissue move on and form those structures then those structures are innervated by the cranial nerve associated with that block. So we see these, these divisions as we go through the face and descend between uh, cranial nerve 5, cranial nerve 7, cranial nerve 9, cranial nerve 10 uh, and so on. All right, trust me. But that's it. Um, the four cranial nerves we're really interested in are the, the trigeminal nerve, which is responsible for general sensation of the anterior two thirds of the tongue. Then there's the facial nerve, cranial nerve seven, which was responsible for taste and from the anterior two thirds of the tongue. And then the posterior part of the tongue, the glossopharyngeal nerve is responsible for both general sensation and special sensation. And then all of the muscles of the tongue, except palatoglossus, are innervated by the hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve 12. The cranial nerves do get very complicated. Some of them are really straightforward. Some of them are really busy mixed nerves, but keep looking at them in chunks, keep using them. It, it builds, it builds. You get used to using them. It gets easier and easier, trust me. Okay, and that's it. The cranial nerves of the tongue. All right, see you next week. <laughs>